Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for being here for this very special podcast. We have a very special guest today, uh, the legendary Bill Holter. I'm just going to read a very brief uh, description of the bio on his website, which we'll touch on at the end as well. Um, our guest today was a stockbroker for 23 years and a branch manager for 12. Uh, he was a contributor to GATA since 2007 and wrote for Miles Franklin from 2012 to 2015. Bill is also a precious metals expert and a broker. You've seen him on many shows, such as the X-22 Spotlight with Dave. And I'm very excited and happy to welcome to the show, Bill Holter. Bill, thanks for joining our podcast. Thank you for having me, John. Absolutely. So, you know, our, you're a no-nonsense guy, and so is our audience. So I'm just going to dive right in. Um, about a year, maybe a little over a year ago, you, um, you were on Dave's X-22 Spotlight, and something you said really got my attention. Uh, and, and if I'm incorrect in anything, please let me know. But what I, the genesis of what I thought I heard you say was that the real uh, true debt of the U.S. is somewhere between 240 to 300 trillion, and that gold and silver, which we obviously know are suppressed, the real value to offset said debt would be somewhere in the six figure range for both. Can you just put into your own words for the audience why you feel that's the case? Yeah, uh, well, first off, I think that the true debt is, my guess is it's over 200 trillion. Uh, I don't know that it's up to 300 trillion, but who knows, they've done so much off books. Mm. Uh, there's so much off books debt. I mean, even the Pentagon can't account for where money's gone to. Uh, I think what I was talking about with John or with uh, with Dave is I had done a calculation back in 2016 or 17. If you took just the on books debt, and at the time, I think it was somewhere around 21 or 23 trillion. Um, and if you put that versus the amount of gold that the U.S. supposedly has, the 8,300 tons that the U.S. says they've had and has not been an audit since 1956, I believe. Uh, at that point in time, the gold price would have had to have been about $125,000 an ounce if, if we were to pay the debt off with gold. Now we're at 33, $34 trillion now. Um, so that number is much higher. It's over two hundred thousand dollars an ounce or thereabouts. Uh, the whole I, the, the whole idea was a we don't know how much debt there is. B we don't know how much, and we were not in an, an audit since nineteen fifty six. We don't really know how much uh, gold the U.S. actually holds. So you know what if the debt had to be paid off by gold, what would the the number in U.S. dollars have to be? Um, I mean, you can do the calculation with what, with what we're told, 34 trillion and 8,300 tons, and come up with roughly $200,000 an ounce. But are those valid numbers? Is the numerator and the denominator correct? And, you know, my suggestion is they're both incorrect. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for that, um, Bill. Appreciate it. In other Let words... In other, in other words, there's more debt and there's less gold. Yeah. So, you know, how, how do you come up with an, an exact number? You can. Yeah, it's so upside down, like you said, you know. Um, so let's let's discuss the elephant in the room that no one wants to seem to talk about. Uh, the, the media is uh, finally starting to acknowledge that we're headed towards a recession. As you know, President Trump said recession is the nice word. I believe, Bill, looking because we know that they manipulate the numbers, obviously. Um, I believe that we've probably been closer to four or five quarters of negative GDP. Are we actually in a depression and they just don't want to admit it? Um, I, I agree with your uh, four to five quarters. It's probably much more than that. Um, I, I think what you need to do is you need to look at what the deficit ha or has been each mm -hmm. year um, and take that deficit number. If you take that, which is basically borrowed money to try to create uh, current activity. If you take the deficit numbers out going back however many years, that would to take it out and then subtract it from GDP. Then you're looking at, uh, you know, we've been in a recession. We've been in a recession basically this century because the amount, I mean, you're talking 
where was debt in 2000? I don't remember the number, but I think it was, uh, I think in 1999, I don't think it was 10 trillion. Yeah, I think it was closer to eight if I remember, but I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, but you, you mean use the number of 10 trillion. That's another $24 trillion mm -hmm. added to GDP since the year 2000. So, I mean, what does that work out to be? Like uh, 1.2 trillion a year, or, or we call it a trillion a year. Um, if you take that trillion a year out, then growth has been much, much slower. And the, uh, the, the negative, any negative growth would have been that much deeper. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, all you have to do is look at the individual sectors and you can see, uh, you know, things have, have slowed down drastically. And a, a perfect example, look at real estate. I mean, real estate, uh, that bubble is popped because of interest rates. And I think the uh, canary in the coal mine is commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. Look at commercial real estate. I mean, that's down, I think, if you use a number 20%, that's very kind. If you look at some of the hotels that have sold for, what, 43 cents on 2016 or 17 dollar. So I, I don't think you're far off by saying, you know, we've been in a recession. Uh, and if you really break down the unemployment numbers, the way that they've, they've bastardized the way that they, yeah. they calculate that, the amount of people working is way less than, way, way less than half the population. Right. Actually, it's probably close to a third. Uh, and I mean, if you if you go back to the classical definition of a depression, um, well, I mean, look at the look at the, the the type of numbers we'd be looking at for unemployment. I mean, unemployment has got to be 15, 17, 20 percent. Um, look at John Williams shadow stats. He breaks numbers down the way they were broken down back in the 1970s and 1980s before they started changing the ruler. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, a, that's a great way to put it, yeah. And I mean, here in California, I, the commercial real estate's dried up like an old grape, you know? I mean, it's people, companies are leaving left and right. You know, I remember uh, when Toyota left here, I think in 2017, that's when I kind of thought, Bill, the writing was on the wall as far as commercial real estate goes. Um, uh, I heard on one of your shows with Andy Sheckman that um, you were one of the person people that secured a $50 million deal with a, a billionaire S from Texas. Um, could you elaborate on that? And do you foresee more deals like that coming um, from the super rich? I mean, it, it seems to be an indication that uh, the wealthy are waking up to the idea that the U.S. dollar is pretty worthless. Um, yeah, we did do that deal uh, back in, I guess, July of of last year uh, or I'm sorry the year before 2022 and yeah I think there's gonna I think there's a lot of that going on behind the scenes uh, with institutional purchases when I say institutional purchases you're talking basically bars and this particular individual uh, wanted a U.S. coin and we basically cleaned out all the junk all the silver eagles and pretty close to all the numismatics that were available, numismatic gold uh, that was was available at the time. Other than that, I mean, I'm not at liberty to, to speak any more about that particular trade. Sure. No, fair, fair enough. Um, when the global economy implodes, like many experts are predicting, do you think the central banks around the world will be able to print enough money to save the debt-based system? Or do you think it's, there's just going to be a straight-out default? Um, I think ultimately there will be a straight out default across the board because mm -hmm. the derivatives are going to blow up. Um, but let's say that I'm wrong and that there's not, that there's not a, an outright default and, and printing money works. What does that mean to the value of the dollar, the value of the euro, the value of the yen, the British pound, et cetera, et cetera. If they, I mean, I went on record back in probably, I don't know, 2000. 15, 16, 17, saying that because of the trajectory of the debt, it had already become unpayable. And the debt is unpayable in current terms, in current currency terms. Now, 
could they could they double money supply? Yeah, I mean, theoretically, they could do that, but you would have an absolute crash in the purchasing power of dollars earned, you know, after that event. So for, for years and years, it this has been a question, will they will they default by non-payment or will they default basically by blowing up the money supply and, and cheapening or debasing the currency? That's what they're going to try to do is they're going to try to flood the system. Uh, they flooded the system in 2020, 2021 after COVID. And that basically saved what was happening in the fourth quarter of 2019. We were on, we were dead on track of a blow up. You, you were watching uh, the LIBOR rate, the overnight rate uh, explode to 10%. The Fed was coming and was having to come in with hundreds of billions of dollars every single night mm -hmm. just to keep the thing low. And then conveniently, COVID came along and all the rules went out the door, your your liberties went out the door, and it allowed cover for central banks, not just the Fed, but central banks worldwide to print. And that obviously, uh, it did goose the economy, it did save uh, the banking system, the financial system from collapsing. And I, I, I truly believe that's where we're headed again. We're, the interest rates have risen to a point where any debt that needs to be, be refinanced mathematically doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. So in order to try to save uh, the financial system slash the real economy, they're going to have to drastically reduce interest rates. But what that does is it, it pulls the veil back, it pulls the curtain back on the fact that the math does not work. And an obvious way to look at that is just look at the U.S. Treasury. We're now paying a trillion dollars a year in interest only. They only pull in, and last year was a record year, they pulled in 4.7 trillion. So better than 20% of tax dollars now goes toward paying interest. Another 20% goes toward defense. And we're still running a one to two trillion, uh, well, it's probably gonna be even be more than that. I mean, we've done over a trillion in the last couple months. Um, the deficits are, are, are at the point of exploding. I mean, it's left alone, we would be to the point and markets will not allow this. Markets will crash long before uh, but left alone, the U.S. would be in a situation where they had to borrow just to be able to pay the interest. And, you know, mathematically uh, or from a common sense standpoint, that's that, that doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, so, Bill, on the backs of what you just shared, how do you imagine the debt will be removed if the debt is owed to the Fed? Are they going to do some kind of cancellation or do you see something else altogether? Well, I suspect they're going to try to do a, uh, and, well, when I say I suspect, I mean, they've told us that they want to do central bank digital currencies. Uh, that would make it, uh, obviously, from a liberty standpoint, if you buy a stick of chewing gum, they know it. Um, but the other thing, and I think more importantly, they'd be able to basically create money supply and not tell the public, not tell the world. So, I mean, the central bank digital currency would be a way to just basically print more worthless currency to try to keep the system going. Um, I, I do believe that there, that, that's going to come about with a first reset, so to speak. Um, you know, the, and and the central bank digital currency will be brought forth after bad uh, financial events. And I, it's my opinion that it, the events will be so bad that people are going to be begging governments for help, and the help is going to be the central bank digital currency, and people will accept it. Ultimately, I believe there's going to be a second reset, a mother nature reset, uh, which will include an east to west reset. 
meaning the East is moving toward commodity back, gold, oil, what have you, back currencies. In other words, real and fair settlement, mm -hmm. trade something, something instead of something, nothing. And that's going to really put the West on their heels because the Western uh, currencies are are still going to be fiat, whether it's paper dollars or digital dollars, they're still all worth nothing. So I, I think we're going to go through a, a, a real calamity from a financial standpoint. Um, and I do want to mention, uh, before we get off this topic, please, everyone should read. Everyone should read the. It's a digital book. Uh, you can get it free online. The Great Taking by David Webb. Yep. Um, those that is not speculation that is not opinion it is fact that those laws are on the books mm -hmm. and it just makes sense that those laws are going to be used to shore up the institutions that the powers that be want saved and they're going to do that with the public's money so i think it's really important i, I really urge anyone listening to this to read the great taking it is not uh it's not conspiracy theory it's not uh opinion uh mm -hmm. perceptive thought it's fact as far as those laws are on the books yeah i i couldn't agree more bill i i actually watched his documentary a couple weeks ago and posted it on my telegram channel so it's funny it's good that you mentioned that so a good pivot bill to what you just shared which to me was so cogent and important i, I really hope that our our audience really rewinds and grasps that that um, key of what you just said. Um, with that all in mind, when does the when do the wheels of the global economy finally just come off and they can't cover it up anymore? <laughs> uh, let me check my crystal ball. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, four or five months ago, I was skeptical that we would get through the end of this year. And we obviously got through for the end of last year, the end of 2023. 2024 has an election, a U.S. election coming up. And it's my opinion that there's less than a coin flip, less than a 50-50 chance that we actually have an election. And I yeah. say this because the financial system on its own is, is got one foot on a banana peel and the other in a grave. The powers that be, the powers that are are running uh, the U.S., running basically the Western world. <clears throat> if those in power in the U.S. lose power, and we were to even start to return to a true rule of law, you'd see people left and right going to jail. And it's, I, I can't, I, I just, at this point, I think an election, they can't allow an election because if they do, uh, I mean, it's, there's no way they can cheat enough mm -hmm. to win this time around. I mean, even, I just saw something uh, a day or two ago, even in the state of California, 63 or 67 percent of those polled don't agree with the transgender uh, laws and policy in California. I think I, what I'm getting at is people are fed up. People mm -hmm. are pissed off. You know, they've had enough shit shoved down their throats. Yeah. And I, I, I don't see that they'd be able to cheat enough to retain power and if they can't retain power then plan b has got to be we got to come up with something to stop the election some type of false flag who knows another pandemic uh they light up a city um a cyber attack i mean there's there's probably a hundred different possibilities as far as what type of false flag could be used to cancel an election mm -hmm. but it's just my <clears throat> opinion we we don't have an election because the the result will not result in what the powers that be want. 
Yeah, there's a certain inevitability of the outcome, like you're saying. Um, yeah, and then, like, you know, President Trump even, as you know, said a while back that, you know, we were going to have a big crash in the next 12 months, which obviously indicates this year we're, we're right in it. We're right in it. And I'm, I'm with you. I, right. I'm a, sorry. I was just going to say, and speaking of, of President Trump, uh, and it's not just about Trump, but if you listen to what the media says, listen to what the left says, if Trump gets in, that's the end of our democracy. And they're <laughs> trying to uh, not allow him on, on various state ballots. Right. Well, isn't democracy, and it, first off, this country is not, a democracy a republic it's supposed to be a republic correct right so let's be clear about that but yep. as far as the left using the term democracy isn't a democracy the ability to vote for whoever you want to vote for not who they choose who right. you to vote for so i mean it's just it's getting so blatant and so obvious that it's all bullshit. I mean, everything that we're fed is bullshit and lies. Yeah. And the people know it, like you said, they, they already know that. Right. Uh, Bill, I had heard you uh, say in a, a show a while back that uh, the amount of money you need to invest in gold and silver is relative to the amount you don't want to lose. But many listeners don't <clears throat> have the means to, to you know, sell everything they have to invest in metals. So do you have a minimum target that someone should have or can have to get in the game, at least for precious metals? Uh, my rule of thumb for what to have on hand, I've, I've been an advocate of junk silver for many years. I think it's the best form of silver to own. And if you can do it, my recommendation, I think it's more than what you'll need. Uh, but my recommendation is that you have one bag or $1,000 face of junk per person in your household. Um, now you, you said something about people don't have the means and if they, you know, they'd have to sell, sell stuff to buy metal. Um, if you, if, if people read and, or, or read or watch the, the video on the great taking, you've got, uh, stock accounts, consider that money gone. When your broker goes out of business, it's on his books. It's not yours. Uh, so that's stock that's going to be basically gone unless you get the certificates issued out to you. Um, and if you don't do that, then why leave it there? Why not put it into metal? In metal, gold and silver are the only two monies on the planet that cannot bankrupt. And I mean, think about this for however many years, 50 years, 70 years, U.S. Treasuries were considered risk-free um, sacrosanct, and, and that's where you put your big, big, big money that you don't want to lose. That's no longer the case because it's it's pretty obvious that the, not only can the U.S. bankrupt, it's insolvent as we speak. So is the Federal Reserve. They have a negative net worth right now, the Federal Reserve. So does the ECB. So does the Bank of Japan. So do all these central banks. They have negative, negative equity. Uh, so gold and silver cannot bankrupt. And the reason, I mean, I simply say when, when people ask me, how much should I put into gold and silver? My standard answer is whatever you don't want to lose. So, I mean, if you have stock accounts, uh, large balances in bank accounts, um, annuities, things in the insurance industry, just understand that you need to read or watch the great taking because that is absolutely those laws are on the books and they don't they don't write laws to not use them they write laws and then they're used yeah exactly really good point so with the inevitability of the global crash and the commercial real estate debt uh death um which country do you think the implosion might begin where do you think that touch point might be um <clears throat> who knows and it doesn't matter because within 72 hours, it'll be all over. Hmm. The world will spin three times. Once once one major entity goes, it won't take but 72 hours for the whole system to topple and everything closed. And, you know, is it going to be closed for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, six months? You know, I don't know. 
I don't know uh, how long how long the episode will be, but I I I truly believe this is going to be like a light switch event. And let me say, out of nowhere, to the average person, I mean, you're looking at it, I'm looking at it. There are some people who who see what's going on, but to the average person, this is going to happen, and there's going to be no warning, and the average person's person is going to think what happened how did this possibly happen mm. and it's pretty obvious yeah yeah so it's basically gonna be a domino effect ostensibly right but a very very fast domino effect yeah yeah because exactly. everything is global all yeah. banks are in bed with all banks all brokers banks they're all interconnected mm -hmm. and we were only three hours away from that in 2008 mm. they didn't do anything to fix it all they did was pump more money into the system. I mean, the Fed secretly lent $16 trillion. We didn't find out until uh, two years after the fact, but the Fed lent $16 trillion all over the world to get through that. And none of the reasons behind that happening were ever addressed. It just got bigger. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Absolutely. I remember, unfortunately, 08 all too well. Um, I don't know if you ever saw a movie build, uh, The Big Short, but uh, I thought that was a pretty decent depiction. And I kind of, I've been telling my, my you know, friends and followers that I, I see this new economy like that on steroids, because that was just US for, you know, real estate. Now we're talking the whole entire global economy. Right. Um, and actually, let me, let me just, please, uh, hypothesis for a second. Um, my guess, if I had to guess one, one uh, event or one thing, uh, not a false flag, but one uh, real event that could take the system down. We've already seen uh, the United Arab Emirates announce just before Christmas that they would not take dollars for oil. That's the first one. Uh, Saudi Arabia, what was it, six or eight months ago, maybe longer than that now, announced that they would take other currencies other than dollars and dollars also but that was the first time since 1973 that saudi arabia would accept non-dollars as payment for oil if this becomes a bandwagon like you know you get another entity or two entities three entities or you know it starts to spread that say we will not accept dollars for oil then it's game over um, and I, I'm just running through the weeds here. Um, God forbid we ever hear of a destroyer or worse, an aircraft carrier gets sunk in the Middle East. What do you think that's going to do to the dollar? And we do not Probably. have hypersonic weapons. There are hypersonic weapons. Russia has hypersonic weapons. And if you, if, if you can't, catch it you can't kill it hmm. it's so, true i mean what i'm getting at is we have defenseless uh we have defenseless ships over there against hypersonic weapons now you know whether those are used or not i don't know but, but uh, just you know, any day that you wake up these deadlines could be you know uh xyz got sunk and that's it it's game over for the dollar yeah because oh. remember um one of the big props and actually the biggest prop probably for the last 10 15 even 20 years to the dollar has been the u.s military and if it turns out that you can visually see that the u.s military is not the biggest stick on the planet any longer neither is the dollar yeah and and the world is without a doubt, turning away from the dollar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They go hand in hand, like you said, the, the military and the dollar. I mean, not only Saudi Arabia, Bill, but as you know, Iraq, Iraq has said of January 1st, they're not going to be accepting dollars in and out of the country either. So, you know, I'm I'm watching them. I'm also watching Iran, because I really believe Iran has a big role to play with BRICS with respect to, you know, the Red Sea and, and uh, the Bering Straits. You were talking about, you know, the ships. And Israel, I'm watching that as well. So it seems like the Middle East is going to play in this prominently as they always do. Um, I agree. 
so it seems that uh, gold and silver bill can't get a break. They they start to plateau, you know, at, at, at modern historic levels, 2100, and then they get manipulated. We know it's all rigged and manipulated by the cabal in the system. Um, what do you think it's going to take to finally let, you know, the leash off and let these metals hit their true value? Uh, exactly what I've said all along is that a failure to deliver, whether it be gold or silver, a failure to deliver will free the price. And uh, right now, I think you're looking at 40 to $50 premium of over in, in China on gold versus COMEX and L LBMA. So what you're seeing is you're seeing the West get drained because it's certainly profitable with a, a 40 or $50 premium to buy gold in New York, ship it and sell it in, in China. And all you need to earn is, you know, three dollars five dollars ten dollars an ounce and it's profitable we're at 40 50 dollars an ounce so that the the metal is being drained from the west and it's been going on for years and years um not not with this type of premium but metal has been moving from west to east for 20 years now and the question is where's the bottom of the barrel uh i don't know what type of signals there would be. I know there was a signal and, and I was called a complete lunatic and back in 1989. I I came out and said that the Soviet Union was gonna collapse based on czar bars, bars that were stamped uh, with, with the czar's uh, seal were turning up all over the world back in late 1989. And what that showed was they were out of, Russia, the Soviet Union, was out of gold, and they were selling gold that was 90% uh, pure to raise hard currency. Uh, I I don't know of, uh, I mean, I right now I don't know of any signs like that, and I don't know what, what signs will pop up, you know, whether it's just you wake up one day and find out, hey, COMEX failed to deliver, or LBMA failed to deliver, or whatever. But failure to delivery or to deliver is going to free the price. Absolutely. So with that in mind, when the failure of delivery does inevitably happen, how high do you think gold and silver will actually go? Uh, <clears throat> numbers that you, I, nor probably anyone else have ever really thought. Of. Hmm. What's the, well, let me ask you this. What's the opposite of zero? Negative. Infinity. Infinity. The yeah. answer is infinity. Infinity. Okay. If a, if a currency goes to zero, then a cup of coffee can be bought with however much currency. How much would an ounce of gold cost or an ounce of silver cost? I mean, so I hypothesize when we talked about the numbers, if they had to pay the debt off, you're looking at, you know, 200,000 just with the on, on books debt. That you have some parameters, but if, a, if currencies all over the world are failing left and right, what is the value, uh, you know, what, what's the value of a, an ounce of gold, an ounce of silver, a cup of coffee? What, you know, what is the value of anything in a currency that, that becomes worthless? So basically, if it's at infinity, there could be a point potentially, Bill, where we don't know what anything's worth in this transition. Well, we're, right, we're going to, I fully believe that's going to happen. We're going to go to a, a system down scenario and then stuff is going to be valued at whatever you can trade it for. And you're going to have what you have and that's all you're going to have. Mm. It's just not like you're going to be able to go to Walmart and you know some people are thinking, oh, well, I'll just go with junk silver to Walmart. You could go to Walmart, but there won't be anything on the shelves. You could go to your grocery store. There won't be anything on the shelves. Go to the gas station. It'll be closed. A silver dime, silver ounce, uh, an ounce of gold or whatever. I mean, you, there's no way to know what it's, you know, what the value is. Typically, one silver dime, one pre-1964 dime, is a dozen eggs. Will that hold up? Will the farmer uh, who has lots of eggs covet silver more? then you covet eggs to eat. I mean, it's it's strictly, mm. it's going to boil down to what you can trade stuff for 
It's not like you're going to be able to pop on the internet. Who knows if the internet's even going to be up? Hmm. The communications will even be up. Right. Assuming they are, I mean, even if, if the internet's up, where are you going to get pricing from? You might get pricing from, from uh, China. You might get pricing from Russia. I mean, pricing COMEX, COMEX will be completely irrelevant because those are contracts that give you a price. And what's the value of a contract that can't deliver? Zero. Yeah. So potentially there's a high degree of probability that we could be going back to sort of a 1950s bartering system, basically. There's a potential we're going to go back to the Stone Age or a spell. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, no, think about it. Yeah. Think about it. Everything runs on credit. Everything runs on credit. Sure. Would your power company be able to continue providing electricity if the financial system's down? Would your right. water company be able to continue to purify water? Right. The grocery stores. Will there be somebody? Will there be somebody to answer your nine one one call? Will there be a cop on the road? I think most cops are going to be at their own home, protecting their own family and their own homestead. Yeah. Yeah. Everything runs on credit. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the biggest credit event in the history of mankind. Yeah. I mean, I think when I think of credit, especially, Bill, I think in, in this scenario, like grocery stores and trucking distribution, that's all COD. So, right. you know, that's the most common. No, it's, no, it's not COD. It's oh, not, it's not COD. Okay. No, it's, it's basically 30, 60 days pay. Hmm. I mean, when a, when a truck shows up at a grocery store, he doesn't get a check. Okay. There's an electronic bill that goes to the vendor, you know, to the grocery store. And they have 30 days to pay or 60 or, you know, whatever the arrangement yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, there is no, none of, nothing is cash and carry. Everything is credit. Hmm. And if credit breaks, nothing runs. Nothing. Just think about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Would anything work? If there was no credit, no. Well, pretty sobering. Um, so the only please. I, I was just going to say the only thing that would work is is what you have. Yeah. What you have on hand. I mean, let's say you have a source of water. You have a pond. Or you have a hand pump or whatever. Yeah, you could get water, and you got you know you can have to purify it. The, the point I'm trying to get at is yeah. try to become as self-reliant as you possibly can. Right. Even if, if even if I'm wrong and credit doesn't break down, and I, I seriously don't think I'm wrong, but yeah. uh, when credit breaks down, all you're going to have is what you already have on hand. You're 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 not going to be able to fix your position after this happens. After this happens, you're in place with whatever you have. Hmm. So physical assets and just becoming your own central bank, basically, is the key. Becoming your own central bank, becoming your own uh, food source, becoming your own power source, hmm. becoming your own your own protection source. Yep. You know, you are the law on your own property or your own your own area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, normal. Nor <laughs> Normal society uh, is is not even going to be a thought at that yeah. point. It'll be, it'll be survival for a spell. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know you're busy and I want to respect your time. So I just have a couple uh, last questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, pivoting a little bit to <clears throat> the crypto side of things, what about Bitcoin? Do you think there's a valid medium of exchange for the upcoming crisis? And why do you think gold and silver might be a better choice? Just for our younger audience to get that perspective. Um, you're talking to the wrong guy regarding uh, cryptos. In my opinion, it's digital air. I think it's a, a con job. No. Uh, I, can, I can tell you, even if the internet's up, there's no way you might find one out of 20 farmers that would take a Bitcoin for a cow or chickens or eggs or, you know, or, or a you know, fraction of Bitcoin, whatever. Uh, I just, I I think when all is said and done, we're going to find out that 
it was never anything. It was just a giant speculation on digital air. Fair enough. Um, besides gold and silver um, in land and heirloom seeds, weapons, things we were kind of alluding to a minute ago, is there any other sort of um, ancillary investments that you would recommend to people to invest in? Uh, just go through and, and think of what you could possibly need. I mean, you said weapons, obviously lead is, is you know, another precious metal. Um, I mean, whatever you think you're going to need to to live and survive on your own for, like I said, two weeks, two months, God forbid, six months, mm -hmm. uh, whatever you think it is that you're going to need, you know, go through a checklist. Go home on a Friday or go home, go home tonight. Turn your, turn your power off, turn everything off, turn your water off and find out what you need. That would be, you know, pretty eye opening. Yeah. You know, yeah. turn your, turn your regular tap water off. Where are you going to get water from? Mm. Hit, hit the switch on your, on your main at your house for, for power. Where are you going to get your power from? Do you have generators? Do you have solar? Um, do you have a, a way to purify water? Mm -hmm. Do you have, I mean, if you don't have a way to purify water and you need to boil it, do you even have the trees? Do you even have the dried wood that you're going to need for a fire to boil the water? Mm -hmm. And, and it, it boils down to really, you know, basic caveman stuff. Yeah, Stone Age, like you said. Um, what are your thoughts on people who have 401ks that might want to liquidate that to get physical gold and silver? Um, there's obviously an accounting question. I mean, you can roll an, a, a 401k into an IRA. You could do an IRA that holds gold and silver and have it privately vaulted. Um, as far as liquidating a 401k, I mean, I'm not going to go there because I'm not an accountant. I'm not going to have somebody come back and say, you know, you told me to do this or do that. That's something that you need to perform. Uh, whatever the tax ramifications are, go over it with your accountant and then decide what's what's best for you. Do you want metal in hand? Do you want it stored? Or do you think I'm a nut job and I'll just keep my 401k? I mean, it's, it's a, a personal decision. Sure. Sure, absolutely. Well, for those who are interested in possibly converting to 401, their 401ks into physical gold and silver, we'll leave that link for you in the description. Bill, we're at the end, so I'm going to give you the last words. Um, where can people find your work, and what are any parting thoughts you'd like to give to our audience? Uh, I guess my parting thoughts, pretty much adding on to what we were just talking about, is just do the best you can. Um, understand what is coming and just do the best you can prepare to uh, be as self-sufficient as you can. You don't want to rely on, you don't want to rely on uh, counterparties to get capital. You don't want to rely on counterparties for your safety, for your ability to eat, for your ability to, uh, for your ability to live. So just do the best you can become as self-sufficient as you can. I mean, get yourself, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually in shape because what's coming is going to be a war. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we're all going to be stressed and every single one of us is going to have forgotten not one, but probably many, many things. Don't kick yourself because you can't remember everything. You can't, you can't, uh, prepare for everything, but you can prepare for whatever you know, you're thinking of, but think deep. Um, you can, you can read my work at uh, simple www.billholter.com. Um, I did change my business email. It's, it's on a, a bar there to, uh, to reach me. My business email is B H O L T E R at proton.me. If you want to uh, contact me directly. Great. Very good. Well, thanks, Bill, for being on the show. It was an honor, and we'd love to have you back on again soon. And uh, thanks for your time, and I really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks, John. Sure.